James Huntsman, son of billionaire philanthropist John Huntsman, is suing the church, the LDS church, for $5 million for his back tithing. He says that the church has misled him and other members into believing that all his tithing money was going to charitable purposes. Did the church mislead James Huntsman? Does he deserve his money back? We're going to go into the lawsuit of James Huntsman versus the LDS Church Empire in this episode of the Utah Stories program. My name is Rich Markosian. Thanks for joining me. So let's dive right in. So about uh, two years ago now, the Washington Post came out with this story. Whistleblowers from inside of the LDS Church came forward and said they were misappropriating funds from a secret private reserve bank account that the church had to fund the Mormon Mall. So if you look behind me, there is a poster that says Mall Wars. We started covering the story of the church going into the mall business um, back in 2012. We pointed out how the church was the empire striking back against the gateway in building a Mormon mall. That Mormon mall was quite, uh, I'll say, a bit of a weird sort of financial slash religious entity making something into um, a for-profit enterprise for the church. But the church is, this is nothing new for the LDS church. The church has always been in for-profit enterprises. The church has always been trying to make a lot of money on the side with other business ventures. So in this episode, I'm going to go into all of the for-profit entities that the church is uh, managing. I'm going to go into a lot of the agricultural enterprises that the church is involved with. I'm going to go into how the church justifies what they're doing, basically taking money from a private reserve account to bail out their for-profit enterprises. And we'll go into the case of John James Huntsman versus the LDS Church. So let's get into it. Um, first of all, let's get into what does the church actually own? So the church has, of course, ownership over a huge chunk of the downtown Salt Lake City real estate. That's not, nothing new. They maintain many, many shell corporations which these different entities operate under. Some of them are public. Some of them are private. Some of them people know about. Some of them pe people don't know about. They like to play this interesting shell game because they like to do things like bid on farmland without everybody knowing right away that this is the LDS Church bidding on this farmland, as they did in what we reported on just a couple weeks ago. The LDS Church was in a bidding war against Bill Gates for farmland in eastern Washington. The LDS Church won this farmland. They added it to their massive amount of farmland that they own through a company called Ag Reserves. Let's take a look at Ag Reserves and figure and see how it operates. So Ag Reserves, this is their website. They have thousands upon thousands of cattle, thousands upon thousands of nut trees. They have huge amounts of agricultural um, interests that they are in, employed, uh, employing people in. Um, they have uh, thousands of acres of land in Florida where they operate their uh, primary cattle operation. And then they grow grains, they grow nuts, they do all of this to prepare for the second coming of Christ. So the latter day saints, as they say, they are preparing for the latter days. That's the whether you're Mormon or non-Mormon, that is the storyline they present. We are we are doing all this business. We are buying up all this farmland because we need to prepare for the latter days. Um, let's look at their so how Ag Reserves works is this is the public face of the organization, their website. The more private face of their web of their operations, which they don't readily tell people about is called farmland reserve and you can't find farmland reserve really mentioned much you, they don't have a website um, they employ over 800 people they bring in over 239 million dollars in revenue but they don't publicly talk about this um, the headquarters are, are located in salt lake city utah um, 
they bring in a ton of revenue, but what they actually own, what they do, they don't readily talk about. They still have the contact information as being Gordon B. Hinckley here on their website. Um, they've got a phone number. Gordon B. Hinckley, if you didn't know, was the president of the church, I think, until about 2008. He's passed away. He's been uh, dead for quite a long time now. Um, he's still the contact info for uh, Farmland Reserve, at least with this buzzfile.com. Um, so if we look at that, that's kind of how they operate a lot of their different organizations. Um, so they also own what is known as um, the Enzyme Peak Adve Investments Advisors. And that is the, the account that had no public face to it, not even a placard where their offices were located in, in downtown Salt Lake City. And these men would go in every day. They'd help buy up, you know, Wall Street corporations. They'd buy up stocks. They'd have this massive stock portfolio. They were helping funnel money to the, the, the City Creek Center. They were funneling money to the Beneficial Life Insurance Company Group in 2008. All these things were happening without any sort of public awareness. They weren't letting anybody know. Church members weren't involved in this at all. And, and then these guys were who, who were working for the organization, they just came forward and they said, um, yeah, this is weird what the church is doing now. I want to come forward and I want to present to you, all you people, all you members who don't know what's really going on here. And that is the story that the Washington Post, followed by the Wall Street Journal, broke. I want to show you the Wall Street Journal story because the Wall Street Journal actually did an investigation into the whole organization. Um, so up on my screen, this was the huge story that broke and, and that James Huntsman used as the fodder to get rid of his uh, LDS church membership and file the lawsuit. The Mormon church amassed 100 billion. It was the best kept secret in the investment world. And it says, a look inside the vast but little known fund of the LDS of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we've tried to be somewhat anonymous. <clears throat> that's what the church said. We've tried to be somewhat anonymous. So they're admitting, you know, we didn't want to let this out, that we have $100 billion stashed away. Um, but let me read from this story. For more than half a century, the Mormon church quietly built one of the world's largest investment funds. Almost no one outside the church knew about it. Some of that mystery evaporated late last year when former employee revealed in a whistleblower complaint with the Internal Revenue Service that the fund called Enzyme Peak Advisors had stockpiled $100 billion. The whistleblower also alleged that the church had improperly used some Enzyme Peak funds. Um, in, officials from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, colloquial known as the Mormon Church, denied those claims. They also declined to comment on how much money their investment fund controls. So they don't want to let anybody know what they don't want people to know. Um, Roger Clark was the one who commented for the Wall Street Journal, and they didn't want to say anything that they didn't have to say. So that's when um, a lot of you know people I actually know too were starting to think that the Mormon Church, church's vast global empire and their financial uh, wizardry, wizardry in operating as this nonprofit religious organization, but with huge financial ties all across the world in farmland, in investments, uh, was really starting to, to do things that didn't make sense as a religious organization. And I think if you understand Christianity, the idea of a Christian church is to act as the body of Christ in the world. So if you're acting as the body of Christ, what are you doing in the mall business? What are you doing operating outside of the uh, religious temple and organization and going into partnering with the giant, biggest giant corporations in the United States? I mean, it's a fair question, and that is really the ethical question behind this story. And James Huntsman, his lawsuit, it's not gained the type of traction I think that he expected it would. Um, so I want to show you now a story from Forbes that pretty much sums up James Huntsman's case against the LDS Church and the case of the whistleblowers. This is written by Peter J. Riley. Um, he's a tax expert. 
I mean, obviously, you have to be a tax expert to understand the legality of 5013C um, charter and whether whether or not it's violated. And what Peter Riley says, well, <clears throat> it's interesting to see Mormons back in the tax news. The Washington Post has a story about the whistleblower disclosures to the IRS that Enzyme Peak Advisors, Inc., founded in 1997, accumulated $100 billion without ever making any charitable distributions. The only two outflows appear to have been to bail out failing investments, the City Creek Center Mall and the uh, Beneficial Life. Ends like Peak Advisors exempt is exempt from an integrated auxiliary of the church. So the integrated auxiliary, that's the key word here. If you're a nonprofit and you have an integrated auxiliary, that is a vehicle to do financial investments and to do uh, bailouts of companies that you might be affiliated with from that nonprofit if they are legitimate investments. The integrated auxiliary gives the church the ability to take tithing money that's beyond the scope of what is needed to run the organization, put it in a financial account, and do whatever basically they want to do with it. So does James Huntsman have a case? I'm afraid if this Peter Riley is correct, along with this story from the public square, which we'll link to from our site, this is written by another a man named Aaron Miller. If these guys are correct, um, James Huntsman does not have a case and likely it will be thrown out of court. Um, but my point to our readers and people who are watching on our YouTube channel is that our, what you need to do and what you need to consider as a consumer is anytime you're supporting centralized power entities, the biggest monopolistic entities you are essentially funding big Wall Street, big power, and you're funding the ability for them to monopolize the buying public. That's why we so, so strongly encourage you to support local business, local independent business, and local independent voices. That's where we come in with Utah Stories Magazine. So during the month of August, we have a special offer for our YouTube audience, our podcast listening audience, and our readers. Um, we've been in the print business now since 2009, but we need to switch over to mostly getting this magazine to you, to your home, because of gas prices. We've been all over the state of Utah for the last 12 years. That's not sustainable with gas approaching 450 a gallon and a labor shortage. So to help our independent journalism, to support local independent businesses, which are all of our advertisers, including the breweries in Utah that are local independent, the bars, the restaurants, the, the, the businesses that are the backbone of community, we would like to ask you to subscribe to this magazine. It's $24 for 12 issues, 12 months, and with your subscription, we will send you the best of Utah Stories issue, which goes into the tunnels under Salt Lake City that the LDS Church owns. So the church owns all of these tunnels that connects all of their properties. It's very interesting. They have a tunnel underneath their banks, under their general assembly buildings, their, uh, the, the temple. And we go into that in this um, issue of Utah Stories magazine as well as the best stories that we produced over the past 10 years. I think you're gonna love this issue and you'll love being a subscriber because we feature not only the best um, stories in Utah, from all over Utah, but also the best local independent businesses help support and make this magazine possible. So deliver to your door, 12 issues, 12 months for 24 bucks, and you get you know, both the monthly magazine and this special gift you can go to utahstories.com and hit this big subscribe button. And here you can fill out your information. It'll take you less than two minutes and you can help support us. So with that, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.